Okay, so what I am going to what I am going to do now is you know in continuation with our discussion on the importance of local rings I am going to explain the notion of non singularity okay uh, which is uh, uh, in uh, in you know analytical language classical analytical language uh, you are trying to say when something uh, is a manifold okay so uh, or when something is smooth okay so the uh, so in other words uh, you know the idea is that uh, uh, an object is smooth at a given point if the dimension of the object is the same as the dimension of the tangent space at that point. Uh, usually what happens is that you know the dimension of the tangent space will be more and if the dimension of the tangent space is more at a given point then the dimension uh, of the object that you are studying then that point is a singular point it is not a smooth point. So you know uh, 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 you know for example its smoothness uh, in terms of uh, in the language of classical or uh, you know in the language of analysis. So you know if you take a so you know if you take a if you take a surface uh, and you know you take a point on the surface then uh, uh, the, the the surface is so suppose you are looking at a uh, uh, you know the usual topology the, okay, and you are in Euclidean space and you look at a surface for example surface of sphere or surface of cylinder or whatever it is okay. Then you know if you look at the uh, so there is a dimension. Uh, of the surface which is uh, say m okay uh, so in the, so if you are uh, uh, i mean uh, if you are looking at a surface in if you want in uh, so if you are in r3 okay uh, real euclidean in space and you are looking at a surface it it will have dimension 2 okay uh, your curve will have dimension 1 all right so a surface will be dimension 2 your curve in 3 space will be dimension 1 and uh, and you if you take a point on the surface all right and draw you 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 try to draw all possible tangents uh, to the surface at that point you get the tangent space at that point and uh, if the surface is smooth at the given point p okay then what happens is that the tangent space will also be two dimensional okay so what will happen is that you will get a uh, you will get a unique uh, tangent plane you will get a unique tangent plane at the point p okay and if the surface is not smooth at a given point uh, what will happen is that uh, if you look at the tangents the tangent space could have higher dimension so for example you know if you take something like a cone you take something like a cone and if you consider the vertex to be the point okay then what happens is that if you uh, if you how do you calculate the tangent space it is a space spanned by all tangent vectors and what are tangent vectors i mean these are these are uh, i mean uh, uh, they are they lie on tangent lines passing through the point okay so you know if I try to draw tangent lines passing through this point I can easily draw 3 uh, uh, you know uh, uh, I can easily draw 3 linearly independent uh, uh, vectors I can draw 3 different lines uh, which are given which lie in the directions of 3 linearly independent vectors okay. So you know if, if, if the cone is like this right I can draw one like this and then I can draw one like this and then I can draw one like this okay so I, I can easily draw three of them they I get three linearly independent vectors and therefore you know if you take the take all such vectors the space that they span will be r3 so you know tangent space here this is the vertex of the cone has tangent space isomorphic to 
R3 as a vector space because you are easily able to find 3 linearly independent vectors and uh, you know uh, and these are vectors in 3 space alright and uh, therefore uh, the subspace that they span will be all of 3 space. So what happens is that the uh, uh, so here the dimension of uh, tangent space uh, at the point P is 3 which is greater than or equal to uh, 2 which is the dimension of the surface. The cone is 2 dimensional but you take that point which is the vertex of the cone there you look at the tangent space namely the space the vector space spanned by all tangent vectors the tangent space is 3 dimensional so the tangent space dimension is more than the uh, dimension of the cone and so this is this tells you that P is a singular point P is a singularity or singular point or uh, or a non smooth point sometimes uh, in classical I mean in, in analysis in the language of usual analysis you also say it is a non manifold point it is also called as a non manifold point alright. So, so the idea is that uh, uh, at any point if you want to check whether it is a smooth point or not okay what you do is that you try to look measure the dimension of the tangent space at that point if the dimension of the tangent space is equal to the dimension of the object the, the dimension on of the space on which you are considering the point then the point is a smooth point otherwise the dimension could very well be more if it is more then the point is not a smooth point it is a singular point. So it is also the case in the that is also the case with the line I mean with the curve see if you take a point like this on the curve then you know uh, if it is a smooth point I will get a unique tangent direction uh, to the curve at that point and the tangent space will just be a single line it will just be the line spanned it will just be the space spanned by a single vector. So you see the, the tangent space you will get a unique tangent line you will get a unique tangent line at the point P the tangent space at the point P has dimension 1 and that is equal to the dimension of the curve on which the point P is lying that tells you that the point P is a smooth point okay but however you know if, if I take a curve which is not a smooth curve then things can be uh, different for example you know if I take something like uh, you know uh, on, the, on the plane I can easily draw a curve which is not which is not smooth so you know for example if I purposely draw something like this with a with a kink here if I draw a curve like this and take this point then at this point if you calculate the tangent space you will easily see that you can draw two tangents you know from the if I approach from the left okay the uh, I will get a tangent like this if I approach from the right I will get a tangent like this at this point okay and these two are two linearly uh, independent directions therefore the dimension of the tangent space at this uh, at this point is 2 time is 2 whereas the point is lying on a curve which is one dimensional so the dimension of the tangent space is more than the dimension of the curve the dimension of the object at the on which the point lies and that tells you that that point is not a smooth point okay so here what happens again p is a, a singular point as uh, the uh, uh, dimension of the tangent space of the tangent space at the point P is uh, is 2 which is strictly greater than uh, so here also I should not put greater than equal to in fact I should put strictly greater than 3 is strictly greater than 2 and here it is 2 is strictly greater than 1 which is the dimension of the of the curve this is the, so this is the curve on which the point is lying the curve is one dimensional okay but the tangent space at that point is two dimensional where the tangent space 
dimension exceeds the dimension these are the singular points ok. So this is what happens in uh, uh, so I have of course looked at dimension 2 dimension 1 you can therefore say if you are looking in if you are looking at an n dimensional uh, 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 hypersurface ok uh, in, in, in say some uh, which has to be thought of in some uh, Euclidean space of dimension greater than n ok then at a point how do you say uh, the point is smooth or not what you do is that you check the dimension of the tangent space at the point if it is strictly greater than the dimension of the space on which the point lies then it is not a smooth point if it is equal then it is a smooth point ok. So this is the this is the idea from uh, uh, at least from calculus and geometry uh, uh, usual analysis ok. Um, now the analog for this in algebraic geometry is of course there and uh, everything is uh, uh, I mean this, this business of uh, estimating the uh, this, this business of calculating the tangent space and its dimension at the point P uh, uh, is done by looking at things uh, connected with the local ring at the point ok. So, uh, so here is a so here is a here is a definition so so now I am I am switching from you know some classical or analy analytic analysis based situation I am going from there to algebraic geometry. So you know x so I am going to take the following thing uh, I am going to define when a point uh, uh, of an affine variety is a, is a, is is smooth I mean when it is when it is non singular ok and when it is singular right. So uh, so here is uh, uh, so in algebraic geometry so how do you do it so what you do is that you take x to be uh, an affine variety ok let x to let x be an affine variety p a point of x ok. How do you define uh, that p is a, a smooth point or a non singular point ok. So for that what you do is you do the following thing so uh, let uh, x sit inside uh, some a n affine space over k k is of course an algebraically closed field x is an affine variety so it is an irreducible subset it is isomorphic to some irreducible closed subset of some affine space so uh, this is uh, by definition uh, x is isomorphic to an irreducible closed subset of affine space ok and uh, then you know you have the uh, uh, you have the ideal of x uh, you have the ideal of x which is uh, which is uh, which is uh, which is the ideal inside the affine coordinate ring of an ok which is actually you know well it can be identified with the polynomial ring in n variables if you want ok. If you take capital X1 through capital Xn to be the coordinates coordinate functions then you take the polynomial ring in the in those coordinate functions that is the affine coordinate ring of affine space ok and uh, X is an irreducible closed subset so it corresponds to a prime ideal so I of X is its prime ideal and of course you know uh, uh, the affine coordinate ring of x is given by uh, the affine coordinate ring of affine space namely the polynomial ring mod the ideal of x there is a finitely generated k algebra which is an integral domain ok. But the point is uh, uh, more importantly the point is about this ideal see the ideal of x uh, this is an ideal in this polynomial ring which is no ethereum ring so it is finitely generated ok. So, uh, let uh, hi, let us look at a set of generators so f1 uh, say g1 etc up to gm is ideal generated by finitely many polynomials ok. This is true because uh, in an Euclidean ring uh, any any ideal is finitely generated and the polynomial ring is Euclidean because that is uh, as you know 
uh, Hilbert, Hilbert's basis theorem or I mean Oethe's theorem. So you choose a set of generators all right now what you do is you do the following thing you compute uh, calculate the Jacobian of this m tuple of functions with respect to these n variables okay you get an m by n matrix of polynomials uh, a matrix with uh, polynomial entries and that you evaluate at the point p okay and then you get a numerical matrix a matrix with the entries in the field and calculate its rank okay so this is the uh, this is the thing that you will have to do so you calculate rank of Jacobian of G1 Gm uh, uh, with respect to uh, Jacobian with uh, so it is it is with respect to these variables uh, 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 so le let me just write it like this calculate rank of the Jacobian of all this at the point P calculate this number okay. So what you are doing is well basically what you are doing is you are you are you are you are taking you are taking G1 partially differentiating it with respect to X1 and then you know uh, uh, evaluating it at P okay and then you do it uh, so on with G1 uh, with respect to well all the variables Xn and then now you repeat it with G2 uh, with respect to X1 at P and this is dou G2 at Xn uh, at P okay and then you do it like this you calculate this you have this matrix okay now mind you uh, when I say partial derivative uh, uh, you do not have to think of derivative in the sense of calculus because uh, derivative in the sense of calculus will require a limiting process but do not think of it as derivative in the sense of calculus but think of it as formal derivative because you know you can always take any polynomial uh, in so many variables and you know how to uh, define the derivative okay using the usual rules of formal rules of differentiation. So in calculating these derivatives there is no need for uh, I mean you are not going you are not actually computing derivative uh, in the calculus sense okay but you are you are directly using the formula for the derivative which so you know formulas for uh, differentiation of uh, polynomials uh, can uh, I mean they, they these are the same formulas that you get in calculus but then they make sense even without calculus you you take those uh, differentiation formulas as the definition rather than getting them by using uh, a limiting process okay. So you, you have this matrix okay this is a matrix you calculate its rank okay and what you do is uh, you now you do the following thing we say P uh, is a non singular point point of X if so this is a definition the the rank of the Jacobian of the generators okay of the ideal of X at the point P should be equal to the co dimension of X of X in A n and what is co dimension it is co dimension is just uh, dimension of a n minus dimension of x so it is just n minus dimension x. So co dimension of a subspace is just uh, the difference of the uh, it is you take away the dimension of the subspace from the dimension of the ambient space okay the ambient space 
uh, here is affine space a n the subspace is x okay, which is embedded sitting inside a n and you take the dimension of the ambient space minus the dimension of x that is called uh, the dimension of the bigger space minus the dimension of the smaller space is called the co-dimension of the smaller space in the bigger space okay. So the condition for p to be non-singular point of x is that the rank is equal to the co-dimension right so this is the condition and uh, and by and by the way rank of the jacobian at the point p is actually rank of this matrix okay so so this uh, this is equal to n minus dimension of x uh, so this is the condition for p in x to be non singular or for it to be a smooth point okay. Now uh, the beautiful thing about varieties is that you know they they are not always smooth okay uh, they will involve singularities but the point is that uh, uh, where uh, the, the set of points which are singular will form a very small subset the where if you take the set of points which are not singular that will be a huge open set will be a dense open set okay. So, uh, uh, you know if you want to compare uh, uh, if you want to compare a variety with uh, classical uh, smooth object in uh, uh, a smooth object in analysis okay the comparison should be the uh, if you want to think like that what you should think of is that a variety is something like a smooth object uh, on an open set plus a boundary which is the complement of the open set which will have singular points. So you know something like a cone okay the, the if you throw away the point which is the vertex of the cone the rest of it is all smooth okay and that is a dense open set and the boundary is this point which is a singular point. So a, a variety also looks like that there is a big open set which is full of smooth points okay where it is like a smooth uh, which where it is analog of a smooth object in analysis okay these are all the points where the dimension of uh, the variety is the same as the dimension of the tangent space okay uh, and that is what is actually being said in this definition but then we will you will have to we will unravel these definitions and try to re literally see that this is the same as that okay but uh, there is some translation that one has to do okay which we will do okay. So when you think of a variety what one needs to uh, remember is that there is an open set dense open set where it is uh, smooth okay where it is like a manifold a smooth object in analysis and then there the complement of the open set is a closed set it is a boundary and that uh, closed set will consist of singular points okay. Of course uh, there could be varieties which are totally smooth that also can happen and such varieties uh, which are totally smooth are called non-singular varieties right. So uh, now uh, let me um, so th this definition looks a little involved okay but the advantage of this, this definition is that you can make some you can do some calculations okay. So for example you know so if you want to apply it uh, so, so let me take the example of uh, 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 hypersurface. in uh, an okay what is a hypersurface it is a it is a co-dimension 1 sub variety of an uh, it is a co-dimension 1 sub variety and uh, we, we, we have seen this a co-dimension 1 sub variety means that it is a it is an invisible closed sub variety of dimension 1 less so it is dimension n minus 1 and we have seen that uh, uh, this will happen if and only if the ideal of the variety is generated by a single uh, non-constant uh, irreducible polynomial okay. So uh, uh, you know uh, so if I call that as uh, x let me call this as x uh, is equal to hypersurface in an so ideal of x is generated by f 
where uh, or let me use g itself g uh, an irreducible uh, uh, non constant polynomial. So, we have seen this uh, and uh, now uh, what is uh, if you take a point p on this hypersurface uh, when is the point p smooth. So, uh, if I apply this condition so I will get I will have to look at uh, rank of the Jacobian of G which will be just uh, uh, at the point P and that is just going to be that is equal to rank of uh, 2G by dou x1 2G by dou xn. So, you are just looking at uh, all the first partial derivatives of that polynomial and then uh, you are evaluating in them at a point p and uh, this is equal to uh, the co-dimension of uh, x and what is the co-dimension of x is 1 okay because x is a hypersurface. So, the co-dimension is 1 if and only if uh, uh, p uh, is a smooth is a is a non singular point of x so you know if you want the hypersurface to be non singular that means you want all the points on the hypersurface to be smooth non singular points then the condition is that all the first partial derivatives of g should not simultaneously vanish at any given point okay and such a polynomial is called a non singular polynomial okay it is called a smooth polynomial. So, uh, uh, so uh, x is non singular x is non singular if uh, uh, so x is non singular means x is uh, every point at every every point of x is non singular that is what it means. So, x is non singular if and only if uh, the rank of this is always 1 okay and that means that given any point uh, at least one of the partial derivatives should not vanish okay uh, at least one of the partial derivatives. dou g by dou x i uh, never vanishes does not vanish at each point of x ok. So, you know it is very easy uh, uh, to check that uh, uh, a hypersurface is you know uh, is non singular that it is smooth right. So, examples of uh, examples of these things are well uh, examples of smooth uh, uh, smooth I, I, I keep using the word smooth, but in algebraic geometry uh, the word smooth is reserved. Uh, for something more general than this. Uh, so, the word that we use is actually non singular. So, examples of uh, non singular uh, hypersurfaces are well, uh, well, hyperplanes which are given by you know f is f is linear homogeneous, f is a f is a uh, need not be homogeneous well f is just a linear polynomial you take a linear polynomial right. So, uh, so that is f of uh, yeah so f of x 1 through x n is just sigma uh, alpha i x i minus some beta 0 i equal to 1 to n something like this 
and of course you know I am not looking at uh, the case when all the alpha i's and uh, uh, the beta and this beta uh, and this beta are all 0 I mean uh, so I really want a, a linear uh, polynomial which is not the 0 polynomial right or a constant polynomial uh, so at least one of the alpha i's survives is, is non 0 so if you, you know if a certain alpha j survives then do f by do j uh, if I take the partial derivative of f with respect to x j I will get the alpha j which is not 0 so that will never vanish at any point on this uh, hyperplane so these are hyperplanes are non singular and then uh, you can you can you can uh, you can you know take things like n equal to 2 and you can take uh, f to be x squared plus y squared minus 1 okay then uh, uh, well this is the circle in uh, a2 is a circle in a2 and you know if you calculate uh, uh, of course I am I am taking the variables as x and y okay well if I want uh, use standard notation I should take x1 and x2 <coughs> all right so so let me let me do that let me write it as x1 and x2 then you see that you see if I calculate do f by do x1 do f by do x2 uh, I get this uh, I will get 2 x1 I will get 2 x2 uh, okay and uh, now you know uh, uh, now you want that any at any point of the circle okay one of these should not vanish so when will both vanish both will vanish at the origin okay both will vanish at x1 equal to 0 x2 equal to 0 which is the origin in a2 all right but then uh, the origin is not a point on the circle so I, so it doesn't give me so what it tells me is that this is not going to vanish at any point of the circle but there is a, there is a catch the catch is that your this one issue this k could be characteristic 2 k could be an algebraically closed field of characteristic 2 in which case this will be identically 0 because in characteristic 2 2 is 0 so if k is an algebraically closed field of characteristic 2 then this x1 squared plus x, you know this will become uh, uh, you know uh, this will vanish so you have to be you have to be careful about the characteristic of the field uh, where you are uh, doing these computations okay and uh, so uh, so let me put characteristic is not equal to 2 for safety so whenever you get these some integer coefficients you have to really worry about uh, when, whenever you are talking about something vanishing okay and you are in algebraic geometry you are working on an algebraically closed field you should remember that it could be a any characteristic. <laughs> so if the characteristic divides one of these coefficients you are in bad shape because it will just vanish okay. So, uh, so if you take characteristic not equal to you know your circle is uh, is is smooth and <coughs> well in fact if characteristic is 2 uh, something more serious is happening f is first of all not irreducible if you are in characteristic 2 this is the same as x1 plus x2 plus 1 the whole square because in characteristic p a plus b whole power p is a power p plus b power p okay so you know x1 plus x2 and minus 1 is the same as plus 1 in characteristic 2 so this is actually f becomes square of a linear polynomial in characteristic 2 it becomes x1 plus x2 plus 1 the whole square okay and so it is not it is not even irreducible all right. So uh, you have to worry about characteristic all right uh, of course if you are working over complex numbers one does not worry about these issues but then <coughs> whatever algebraic geometry we are discussing about is uh, over an algebraically closed field and you know you can have algebraically closed field so of, of any characteristic right so uh, so this is this is not equal to 0 for any p in the 0 set of f which is the <coughs> which is a circle in a2 and well now you know you can 
uh, you can start uh, uh, this is with one equation you can start looking at uh, 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 objects given by several equations okay and <coughs> start checking which are uh, which are the points that are uh, smooth points and whether the smooth points that is a non singular points or all the points or you get some points which are singular some points which are non singular. Uh, so, so that way this definition is useful for uh, computation all right but uh, uh, you know the problem with this definition is that uh, uh, there are two problems with this definition. So the first problem is I only defined it defined non singularity for uh, a point of an affine variety okay I have not defined non singularity at a point for any variety because any variety in general could be non affine okay it could be quasi affine it could be projective it could be quasi projective. So well I uh, but anyway I can get over this problem by saying that well any of I know that any variety is covered by finitely many open sets which are isomorphic to affine varieties therefore you give me a point on any variety I can find an open set surrounding that point. Uh, which is isomorphic to an affine variety so that point is now lying on this up open set which is an affine variety and then I can say it is uh, 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 non singular or not based on this definition all right. So I can get over this problem of uh, extending this definition of non singularity to any variety just because of the fact that uh, uh, any variety uh, admits a cover finite cover by open sets which are isomorphic to affine varieties that is uh, that is an issue that is easily resolved but that is more uh, something more serious the more serious thing is this numerical business here you see there is lot of ambiguity here you see the same affine variety could be embedded in different affine spaces okay I could embed this same affine variety in a n I could a I could also embed it in some a m if I embed it in a different AM then the ideal will change okay so this ideal is this ideal depends on the embedding see this ideal of X is the ideal in the affine coordinate ring and that affine coordinate ring uh, it is an ideal of the affine coordinate ring it is an ideal of the affine coordinate ring of the affine space in which X is embedded but if I change this affine space where X is embedded then I am changing this ring therefore this ideal also changes this ideal is not an invariant see what is an invariant this is this is the only thing that is an invariant for an affine variety the affine coordinate ring is an invariant okay e whether I embed x as an, as an irreducible closed sub, sub variety of a n or a m any affine space if I calculate this if I calculate the affine coordinate ring of x then you know that is an invariant because that is also equal to ox the ring you know the regular functions on x but the ideal can change okay so that is the ambiguity of the embedding if you change the embedding the ideal will change all right that is the first ambiguity what is the second ambiguity second ambiguity is here when i write the ideal i write a set of generators for the ideal the same ideal can have different sets of generators the sets of generators are, are by no means unique okay so uh, if I change these generators then uh, this uh, you know this Jacobian matrix itself will change instead of, well even the number of generators I have I do not know g1 through gm may be one set of generators I may find these are m generators I may find some different number of generators and they may be all completely different polynomials and again I do this computation what is the guarantee that uh, my definition is uh, consistent okay for the same ideal if I keep the same embedding <coughs> and therefore my ideal is fixed if I take a different set of generators what is the guarantee that if I compute this I will still get the same rank. So well uh, thanks to God that is the case okay and uh, the point is why does that happen uh, the one way to see it is using the using the language of local rings okay. So this is where the power of local rings 
comes in to tell you that this definition is independent of the embedding it is independent of the generators for the ideal that you choose you will this, this, this definition is absolutely correct it is not going to fail you it is not going to become inconsistent okay. So it is to that end that I am going to state something now so here is a uh, this is a fact uh, which was uh, discovered and proved by uh, Oscar Zariski uh, who is who can very well be called the father of or even the grandfather of algebraic geometry for the, uh, the grand man of algebraic geometry he was a, he was a person who uh, uh, initially uh, wrote papers in the Italian style uh, where uh, he was where the papers were um, the proofs were based more on you know geometric ideas and uh, there was not there was no uh, proper rigor but then being a uh, you know commutative algebraist and field theorist he developed the necessary commutative algebra and field theory to translate all that into the modern language and then he was able to rewrite everything gradually and show that everything is <coughs> can be you know made rigorous using commutative algebra so uh, uh, so this is uh, so here is a theorem <coughs> so here is a theorem uh, let x be a variety uh, then uh, and 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 p a point of x then p is non singular if and only if dimension over k of m p mod m p squared is equal to dimension of x ok. So, so this is the this is the correct statement. So, uh, so the so the, the what I want to tell you about this is you see you have you have uh, uh, the local ring O x p ok this is the uh, this is the local ring of x at the point p ok and it is a local ring so it has unique maximal ideal and that maximal ideal is given by this m p ok. So, with so this is with unique maximal ideal m p right and now what you must understand is uh, you know uh, the dimension of the local ring we you know that this is the same as dimension of x this is something that we already know ok the, the dimension of the local ring is the same as the dimension of x and uh, so you know you can uh, here I can add uh, if I want it uh, if I want to reflect the point p I can also write dimension of o o x p ok and uh, So you know if I if I if I if I remove the if I don't look at the central one term, then I have a condition which seems to have only to do with the local ring. I'm just saying that the dimension of the local ring is the same as the dimension of m mod m squared. So you know what I wanted to understand is the the local ring modulo the maximal ideal will give you just uh, k. And what you must understand is that if you look at uh, MP squared, okay, this is the square of the ideal MP. So you know uh, this is uh, uh, this is you know this is this is just uh, 
consisting of elements of the form you know uh, uh, sigma uh, ai bi i equal to 1 to some l where ai and bi are in the maximal ideal okay this is just the squared ideal all right sum of uh, finite sum of products two taken at a taken two at a time from the ideal okay from this maximal ideal mp and you know this is if you if you if you look at it if you look at uh, and and of course this is contained in this is contained in mp uh, okay this is certainly contained in mp because uh, uh, if you take two elements of uh, this ideal and multiply them out the product is certainly in the ideal the sums such finite sums are also here <coughs> so this is contained in the inside this but the point is that if you look at uh, uh, mp mod mp squared okay this is a k vector space okay this is a k vector space and it is a k vector space just because of this fact because o mod m is k okay. So this is a this is a k vector space it is a module over k well in fact you see uh, you take o x p uh, modulo m p you can you can define a scalar multiplication like this by simply you know uh, uh, f uh, so you know f bar uh, comma uh, well uh, g bar going to well f bar g bar I think this should give you uh, this should give you an obvious uh, map which will make mp mod mp squared a module over oxp mod mp but oxp mod mp mp is just k therefore mp mod mp squared is a module over k so it is a vector space okay. So you can well you know you can check that this is uh, uh, this map is well defined where this f bar is uh, uh, where f is an element of the local ring so it is a germ of a regular function at the point p and f bar is its image uh, actually f bar is just that regular function evaluated at the point p okay it is just evaluation and uh, uh, and here you are you are you are taking g bar uh, uh, g bar is just the image of a g a, a g is just a regular function uh, uh, in a neighborhood of p germ of a regular function in a neighborhood of p which vanishes at the point p so g is in g is in mp and its image in the quotient mp mod mp squared is g bar so you are reading g up to uh, you are you know going mod mp squared is just reading the only the linear term when you go mod when you go mod m you are evaluating at the point see these are all actions that are going on at the with, with the elements here in the local ring what are the elements in the local ring the elements in the local ring are regular functions germs of regular functions how do you for how do you get this quotient uh, isomorphic to k what you do is give me a regular function at that point you evaluate it at that point you give me a germ of a regular function here you evaluate it at that point that will give you a map from this to k its kernel will be exactly mp the all those uh, germs of those regular functions which vanish at the point p so the quotient will be k so this isomorphism is just evaluation arises just by evaluation of a germ of a regular function in a neighborhood of p at the point p okay and what is this uh, what does m mod m squared stand for it is you take a function which vanishes at the point p germ of a regular function which vanishes at the point p that is what a 
function that belongs to m p means and reading it mod m p squared means that you take literally you know it is derivative because you know you are cutting if you read mod m squared that means you are not you are only taking the linear term you are not taking the degree 2 term onwards. So in a sense this corresponds to uh, uh, taking only reading only the linear term alright and that is correspond and you know the, the first order term always is the derivative. So uh, going m mod m squared is reading of the derivative in a certain sense okay and therefore uh, this is how m mod m p uh, m mod m squared becomes a k vector space okay and it is uh, 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 it is certainly a finite uh, dimensional vector space because you know <coughs> after all uh, 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 oxp is uh, is a is a noetherian ring you know this local ring is a noetherian ring and this ideal uh, uh, mp in this noetherian ring is finitely generated you take a set of generators and take their images here they will give you generators for this quotient so it's a vector space which has finitely many generators and therefore it's a finite dimensional vector space it's a vector space which has a finite spanning set so it's a finite dimensional vector space okay therefore this is a finite dimensional vector space you calculate its dimension okay and this dimension if it is equal to the dimension of x then and only then is the point p uh, a, a non a non singular point so you know what this quantity is you know this quantity is actually <laughs> the dimension of the tangent space at the point p this quantity dimension of m mod m squared over k actually measures the dimension of the tangent space to the variety x at the point p and what normally will happen is that this will be more than this as we saw in those examples of a cone and a line uh, 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 and, and a curve with a kink at a point what happened at the singular point was that the dimension of the tangent space shot up the dimension of the tangent space became more than the dimension of the object and for, for the vertex of the cone the dimension of the tangent space is 3 whereas the cone is only 2 dimensional so the vertex is not, not, a, sing, not a smooth point it is a singular point similarly if you take a line with a kink if you take a curve with a kink at the point where you have the kink you know the tangent space becomes 2 dimensional and the dimension is 2 which is greater than dimension of the curve which is 1 so that point which is the kink is not a smooth point it is a it is a non it is a singular point okay so that is exactly what is happening here so it is it is a matter of it is a matter of a little bit of commutative algebra to check that you know uh, if you have a noetherian local ring with maximal ideal m then the dimension of this vector space will always be greater than or equal to the dimension of the local ring okay and if the dimension is greater than the dimension of the local ring then that point p is not a smooth point it is not a swing it is not a uh, non singular point it is a singular point it is a singularity if the dimensions are equal then it is a smooth point so the the point i wanted to understand is that what this see what this theorem is saying is exactly uh, the analog of what we saw in the analysis calculus situation that a point of a variety is smooth if and only if the dimension of the tangent space at that point is exactly equal to the dimension of the variety and what will happen if it is a non singular if it is a singular point this will be bigger than this you will have more uh, the tangent space dimension will be more than the dimension of your uh, of the space on which the point lies <coughs> okay but the but the <coughs> but the nice thing that i want you to notice is that that whole thing that is done using calculus all that has been captured just using local rings that is what I wanted to appreciate okay. So when you do usual calculus how do you calc how do you define a tangent uh, space at a point you, you take a point you draw a curve through the point and then you draw the tangent to the curve at that point okay and then like this you 
try to fill uh, the a neighborhood of the point by curves draw tangents <coughs> and then now take this all the space of all these tangents that is the tangent space. So it involves it involves the usual facts from calculus thinking of curves passing through the point and drawing tangents and all that okay and and uh, and of course even to find the tangent to a curve at a point it is a limiting process right because you take that point and you take a sufficiently close point and then you draw a chord and then you take the limit as the sufficiently close point tends to the given point. So the chord becomes the tangent at that point. So in the usual calculus even the process of getting hold of a tangent is a is a limiting process and then you in this way you build the tangent space you, you check out what the tangent space is you calculate its dimension and then <laughs> you check whether the tangent space dimension is more or whether it is equal to the dimension of the object and then that is how you get smoothness or not and it involves lot of calculus. But you see in algebraic geometry uh, all that uh, limit process is not there but still you are able to capture the smoothness the, the non singularity the key is uh, local rings okay that is one fact then the other fact is what this tells you is that you know uh, this based on this definition tells you that, that this definition uh, is independent of the embedding of x in affine space if x is an affine variety then a point of x is uh, uh, smooth okay uh, that is a condition which is intrinsic to the point because that condition uh, only depends on the local ring at that point and the local ring at, at a given point is invariant it will not change if you no matter how you embed your variety uh, the local ring is an invariant and therefore this theorem tells you that the non singularity that you have defined here actually really does not depend on this embedding or this ideal or I mean this embedding which <laughs> dictates this ideal and then <laughs> the ambiguity of what generators you have chosen for this ideal okay. So it is a very intrinsic uh, statement okay and that tells you that uh, you do not have to worry about this definition uh, but it is useful to make calculations and to check <laughs> that a given <coughs> you know uh, variety defined by a bunch of equations is smooth or not at a point. So in that way this definition is, use, is, is useful but that theorem tells you that you are not going to go wrong if you use this. So uh, um, I will give you a proof of uh, this in my next lecture okay, so I will stop here.